this party started. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Notary Assist special training with Notary Assist founder, Sue Hope. Sue, welcome back. Glad you made it. Thank you. Welcome to be back. Happy to be back. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate your time. I know so many of us does. I've had so many, uh, so such great feedback after yesterday's introductory training. So I know there's going to be so many more looking forward to diving deeper. Um, first, not everybody was here yesterday. So if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit about exactly what Notary Assist is and overview of what it does? No problem. So in a nutshell, Notary Assist is a very powerful business management software tool where you can actually help keep track of your appointments, your mileage, your expenses, your invoicing all in one place so that it helps allow you to stay focused on your job and what you do so well. We just help you take, keep track of your business aspect of it and we try to make it as easy as possible knowing that that's not everybody's favorite thing, kind of like the grocery store. <laughs> just like that, yep. <laughs> so what makes you guys, what makes you unique in what you offer? How do you know what a notary needs? Well, I've been a notary for many, many years. Uh, like I said yesterday, lots of commissions. We just don't count how many. Um, and our commissions are good for four years at a time out here in California. So we just won't tell you how many. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I've been doing notary work for over 20 years. I've been out there living in my car, doing a lot of the same things that you all are doing. Um, not quite to the extent of having a full traveling office with a printer and scanner, which I think some of you can do, and that's fantastic. Um, but I've been around doing that, and then there was a lack of ability to put something in one place to keep it organized that wasn't manual. Having the ability to have it somewhat automated really was a game changer for us, and we, we offer a very strong product while keeping it very simple and easy to use and user friendly. I love this and I, uh, I know so many other notaries across the country. This is not brand new. This software has been out for a while now, since 2007 is when you started marketing it, right? Correct, we've celebrated our 11th anniversary this year in June. So we've been out there 11 years. <laughs> Well, congratulations. And like I said yesterday, I wish I would have discovered this uh, early on in my career. You know, my first bookkeeping system was literally drafting uh, the free invoice templates from Microsoft Word, <laughs> typing them up or handwriting them sometimes, emailing them to the EO, printing them out, putting them in a series of file folders on my desk. So unpaid, paid, and where is it? Or um, even the carbonless copies for a while, or you could tear them apart. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> I love that. I miss that. I, that brings out the nerd in me. All right. Without further ado, let's jump in here and talk about personalization and customization of your setting. I'm going to turn it over to you, Sue. Show us the way. All right. So I think I've figured out how to share my screen properly now. So I... <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to hop in here and grab my screen. Where As you're doing that, I'm going to tell you, Kurt, um, already from your feedback yesterday on how to integrate the calendar, his Google calendar is now working. He thanks you. Oh, and fabulous. I'm so excited. Okay. I've got to move my little thing. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to move my little, there we go. Yeah. I just have to move that over here. It and was then, in my navigation system. So where we left off yesterday is Bill's link at the bottom of, I think what you're recording right now has a link for um, directly to our website. So you can get right to Notary Assist by launching any of your chosen browsers. And when you land on Notary Assist, like we talked about yesterday, if you're brand new, you're gonna wanna scroll down and actually click on the register now button, which is located right below the main picture. So once you register, which we did, what we kind of walked through that yesterday and you validate your email address, you're going to actually get to use the sign in button. So this is where all active users that have already gone through the registration process are going to go. So that's where we're going to start today. If you click on the sign in button, it's going to ask you for the email address that you registered with previously and the password that you created. And then you're going to fill that out and hit sign in. That's going to actually take you. We're Jane notary today. <laughs> Ooh, Jane notary. I know her. She's so sweet. She's been with me for years. <laughs> Good people. Jane, this is the landing page, and this is where you're always going to land in Notary Assist once you log in. 
So it's going to take you to your dashboard. And like I said yesterday, your dashboard is a quick visual graphic of what you've done to this point, either in number of signings each month, or you can even toggle it to the amount of money that you've made. So Jane did really, really well in April. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, but you can also switch it around, whichever you would like. And then it also gives you a pie chart of her expenses. So how did she do with her expenses? How did she do with her income? A visual profit and loss, if you will say. Now, to get started, we also recommend that you take 5, 10, 15 minutes, half an hour to just go through and customize Notary Assist for what you need. Not every notary is the same. Some notaries do general notary work. Some notaries do um, applications. Some notaries do weddings. I mean, I'm, we're not allowed to do that in California. We have to be a little bit more specialized than just regular notary. But there's lots of different revenue streams that you can use. And Notary Assist is customizable for your needs. So we're going to jump over to the left-hand margin. So can Maybe I interrupt you real quick on this? Sure. If somebody wanted to hide that dashboard or that left-hand panel, how would they do that? So we try to make it fit lots of different things. So if you come on over here and see these three parallel lines, it'll collapse the menu. And then we can open it right back up again. There you go, Diana. Awesome. Thank you so much. Not a problem at all. Because that'll help you, especially if you're on a mobile device, a smaller platform, that'll help you see more. So we're going to navigate down to settings, which is where we're going to play today. And we're going to work through these categories so that you can customize Notary Assist specifically for you. Mileage, if we click on mileage, there's lots of different things inside of here. Now, by default, sorry, chain notary is by default, not in the way. By default, <laughs> it goes odometer to odometer because you might want to depreciate your vehicle. And if you depreciate your vehicle, now I'm using a big term, the IRS wants you to keep track of odometers to odometer on that specific vehicle. So we are not tax accountants. We are not tax professionals. We give you the opportunity to record the information that you need for said tax professional. So I just want to let you know that we just help you deposit all the information that you need in one location. So depreciation is when you're using one specific vehicle and you want to depreciate that value for your car. Other people like to use what we would call the total mileage, the amount of miles that you drive. So you take that 58 cents per mile deduction from the IRS and you report how many miles you drove for business. Now I'm quoting business miles right now. 58 cents per mile is the business mileage rate for 2019 compared to last year, which was 54.8 cents in 2018. So we're getting a little technical, but here is where you can set up what you would like to do. So if you're an odometer to odometer person, you select that feature. If you're a total mileage person, you can select up here. We also give you a little bonus. See that little auto calculate? We're going to try and auto calculate for you for people like me who forget to write down how far I went. So now Notary Assist will then take your location when you registered. We ask you what your address was. That's your starting and stop location. Then we're going to ask you where you're going. And we're going to use Google to give you a rough idea what your round trip is going to be per appointment. So we'll do that for you to help save you time. Love that. Now on this topic, Sue, is there, um, I know you're, we can't offer specific tax advice, but in your opinion, is there a better way this total mileage or the odometer reading for a particular notary? For me being out on the street and driving for me, it's easier to just let notary assist auto calculate it for me because that, helps me because I forget. I'll forget appointments. Sometimes I grab an appointment in the middle of the day, but if I go and add that appointment later back into Notary Assist, it'll automatically calculate mileage for me. Now I might have to manipulate that just a little bit because maybe I stopped at Staples to get more paper or pen and we might have to modify that total mileage, but Notary Assist lets you modify and it'll hold whatever you put in 
it'll super it'll let you supersede what notary assist puts in. Great. On this screen as well, once you decide what you want, you're just going to hit save and then notary assist will save that. And if you have a start and ending odometer, you're going to see a beginning odometer and ending odometer where you're actually going to type in what your mileage was. And the notary assist will do the math for you. So it'll ask you, you started at odometer 10 and you ended at 35, it's going to know to do the math for you. You don't have to tell it how many miles you drove. So that kind of helps you. If you do total mileage, you're only going to have one category and it's going to ask you how many miles did you drive. And if you auto calculate, it'll auto drop that in for you. So that just kind of dis distinguishes between the two features. At the top, as we go across the top here, we have notary fees. Now, every single one of you is in a different, well, I think almost every single one of you is in a different state. So your boss is the secretary of state for that state. And every notary state has its own notary fees. And what does that mean? That means what the Secretary of State allows you to charge for a notarial act. And that can be all over the board. We've learned this over the last 11 years. There are no two states the same. <laughs> and so we do our best to try and figure that out for you. And we continually work with the National Notary Association to keep on top of regulations and um, laws that have changed. And if it's in a state that we can automatically dump that in for you, we will. If it's a state that has too many factors, let's say one state allows you to charge $1 for the first notarization, but every notarization after that is 50 cents or 25 cents, there's no way for us to calculate. We're going to ask you what that total fee value is. So on this screen, uh, Jane Notary is in a state because she's in California. We know that it's a set fee. So we know what that set fee is so we can automatically calculate it for her. But if she was in a state like Texas, for example, Texas allows the notary to charge a reasonable fee for their services. So that is a fee that we would never be able to know. So we're going to ask you guys what it is because you're the professional in that state. You're licensed in that state. So we give you a, a category called notary fee and we ask you for that state or we ask you for that dollar amount. And then I'll talk about what that relates later in a way different topic because then there's tax benefits and stuff like that that you can use if you wish to. So if that kind of touches base on that. Expense types over here, we have pre-populated notary assist with pretty much your standard different breakdowns of expenses that you might have as a sole proprietor for your own business kind of thing. So we have pre-populated probably, I think there's 25 in here total. But we also realize that between you and your tax professional, you might need to add something that you need. So you can always add an expense category. For right now, I'm just gonna type in, um, let's, what's something about pens? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you might need a whole category just for pens. I know I do. You can add that and you can save it. I'm gonna move this little guy down here, sorry. Um, and you can save it and it'll automatically add whatever expense type that you need to keep track of. So you can add that supply and it'll automatically populate into her category of lists. Once you're done with everything, you're going to hit save. And it's going to know that Jane wants total mileage, that she's in an automatic state, and what expense types she wants. So Sue, can I ask you a question here? When you're setting up especially the notary fees, uh, you know, loan signing is in its own category. So, you know, maybe you're, you have a one, $150 fee. Are you separating that out in a different place or would they do the manual option on that? So that's a little tricky and I apologize for not being able to give a flat answer, but for the most part, if you're doing a packet, let's say from a loan signing company or a signing agency and you get hired for hundred dollars to do a closing, you can put that in under the appointments and that'll be, you were hired by one, two, three notary signing service to do a signing with the Smith family for $100. So it's just going to go in as $100.
Now, in what it depends on what state you're in, that's where the notary fee comes in. So the notary fee that we're asking for there under mileage, and there's actually another one here, so let me close this here, because we're talking about this. So it's the same screen, it's just kind of listed both on this side and also from inside this tab. Mm -hmm. The notary fees are what is set up by the Secretary of State. What you collect, I'm gonna exit out of here real quick to just kind of answer this question. What you collect from a signing, and I'm just hopping into the view signings, and I'm gonna click on an appointment, for example. What you collect from the signing service is different. So this is going to be the amount that you collect. So that's your income. And what the, the notary fees are over here, is how much of that income is self-employment tax exempt. That's how this all comes around. So this fee value is how much is not subject to that extra self-employment tax. I love that you separate this out because this is one of those kind of obscure things that especially new notaries don't realize uh, is this component of it. So I love that you have the ability to separate this out. So we try to give you the option to keep track of all of these special little perks that you get for being a public servant so that you can maximize deductions should you wish to exercise that exemption. And I'm being very careful with my wording here because it might not be the best thing for you to exercise that exemption. It all depends on what your tax professional says about your specific situation. So we always defer it to your tax professional, but we give you a place to record absolutely everything. Beautiful. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> and we're, we're, we'll get some clarity on that too as we come up to the audience as well. We'll send out some clarity on it too, but I love that you're clarifying that not everybody would want to take advantage of that, but we have the ability to use it in here. Correct, correct. And we touch on this again when we do reporting. So at the end of the week, you'll see a whole tax report of how we really break that out and then you'll really understand it a little bit more. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of this and we're gonna go down to invoicing. Everybody wants to know how to get money. <laughs> yes. So Notary Assist gives you the ability to create an invoice from inside of Notary Assist. So the first thing we recommend you do is to come in here and this is going to be how, how do you want to lay out your invoice? This gives you the ability to be creative and customize for your personality, for your business. So up here in name, under the general tab, we've got three tabs here again, but we're going to start with general. Name is going to be who do you remit payment to? So Jane only works as Jane. But let's say Jane was 123 Notary Pro or whatever. I don't know. Like she had a company called 123 Notary Pro. Okay? So she has a company and her company receives payment, not Jane. So if you have a company name or an LLC or whatever you might do business as, whoever you want your check made payable to is going to go on this from line. Okay? So whether you want it to be Jane Notary yourself, or does it have to go into a business account? And for those that have business accounts, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those that don't, and they want to do business as themselves, you're totally fine. Put your own personal name in here, and this is going to be who they pay or who they make the checks payable to. The from address line is going to be wherever you want to receive payments. Now this information might be different and so it's going to always be blank from when we talked about the My Account link when we set up our profile yesterday. You might have a P.O. box that is different than where you're driving from. So up here under My Account is where you're starting from. And again, this goes back to the calculation of mileage. So this is where you're driving from, but this is where you want to receive your payments too. So they might be two different locations. So we give you the flexibility of being able to have things that are not quite tied to each other so it doesn't get frustrating to you. Now you set this up one time and then it will go on every single invoice moving forward. So Jane also wants to put her email address
on all of our invoices. You can add it right here. Or if you want to add a cell phone number, you can add it right down there. And it'll come out on your invoice as well. Default notes. I like this one because it goes on the bottom of every single invoice. So let's say it's the holidays. And that'll go at the bottom of every single invoice. Or if you have a slogan or a logo that you do for your business, and you can say notary service with a smile, if I could type. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love to I love to add a thank you message to each of my invoices as well. I love that. Notary exactly. service. You can put it, anything you want, and this will go at the very bottom of every single invoice you send. So whatever works for your company, you can add it right there, right here. I like this feature too. When you're just getting started, the last thing you wanna send out is invoice number one. So we give you the option of starting with invoice number 1001. That sounds so much better. So You sound very busy. That way you sound, you know, you can add whatever an in invoice you want to start with, or invoice number you want to start with. So if you've already had a system before you start using Notary Assist and your last invoice was 317, not a problem. The next invoice number for you would be 318. You type it in here, hit save. Your next invoice will be 318, so you can keep mute, moving along, and then it's chronological after that. Now the final feature on this particular tab is a logo. So let's say you want to upload a logo to your invoice. So you can click on upload a file. Oh, there's my mom. <laughs> you can <laughs> pick a picture and you can pick a picture from your computer, click on it. It will upload it directly to here. It'll give you a little thumbnail right here. You hit save and that'll be placed in the upper corner of every single invoice that you need from notary. So it gives you just a little bit more customization if you would like. Tab number two is gonna be email. This is who it's coming from. Not who it's going to, but who it's coming from. So I'm Jane Notary, I'm sending my invoices from myself, from my email address. Now Notary Assist will assign a truncation on the back of it to let people know, to let Google know, to let Outlook know, to let iMail know that we're not spammers. So we have to go through a protocol that lets them know that we're a business and we're forwarding this information based on each of our customers. So your customer will receive it from Jane Notary, but there will be a little bit of a truncation on the, or a, a tail end of it that will say that we've passed all the protocol so that we can send it through other servers. So. You probably didn't need to know that, but I just got techie on you. Yeah, that's good to know, actually. That's great. And then we default the invoice number and the last name of the signer for that appointment on every cover letter. This is going to be like the cover letter to your invoice that goes to your customer. So we, by default, do this. But we also give you the ability to use these down here to customize this any way that you'd like. You might not need an invoice number, or maybe you don't need the signer's last name, but you need something else. We'll ask you to put this information in this format, and it's like a mail merge. We'll pull the information from the database file for you and automatically drop it into this cover letter for you. The awesome. body of the letter can also be modified, and you can change this, again, using our list of five different things down below and you can modify this. So this will work on every single invoice. So be careful if you're sending this to just one, if you modify the body for one customer, that'll go on every single email you send. So here's where we're doing it for every single email. And then I'll show you how to modify it for one specific customer or one specific email if you need to down the road. But this is just your template or your blank letter. And then finally is a layout. 
we give people a couple of different options. Again, this is all customization about how you want your invoices to look. And we give you some options to show the loan type on there if you want. Now this loan type is changing to signing type in the, in the near future. We're just changing the title of this category because so many of our notaries are not just signing agents, they're general notaries. So this is gonna actually be signing type or appointment type. So in the future, this, this is going to change to give more general notaries the same kind of understanding. Loan number, for the signing agents that need a loan number on there, they can add it. And then show line item dates. I'm gonna turn this on because this gives you the ability to add detailed lists of, let's say you have a signing fee, you have a print fee, you have a holiday fee, you have a rush fee. If you wanna add multiple different types of services to an invoice, you would need to show the, the line items. So you would wanna turn this on. That's fantastic. Now, Sue, can I ask you a question here, especially yeah. about the loan number? Could that also be the escrow number if, uh, if that was required on your invoices for a client? The escrow number by default always goes on. The escrow number will always be defaulted on there. Right. The invoice number and the escrow number always pulls through. So the invoice on the invoice, this is just a general letter. I'm sorry, I keep using my hands and I forget that I have to use my mouse. <laughs> uh -huh. This is just the general letter. The escrow number will always go onto the invoice itself. It drops off. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. And we'll or get to see that a little bit later on too. So if it's not an escrow company, it might be a signing service or um, it might just be their company ID number and that ID number will always go on the invoice. Okay, great. And then you can pick, this is just really how it's laid out, these two. You can just pick between a classic one. They're very similar. One has more lines, one doesn't. <laughs> They're almost exactly the same, but you would be surprised how many people like to have two or this one is coming soon. It's been coming for a little while. We just don't know which one we want to pick because <laughs> we want them to be simple and easy. So. We don't want to overcomplicate it. We don't want to make it too frustrating. And then we're just going to hit save. And then the invoicing will go away. And I'll show you what an invoice will look like if I go to here. Let me see if I can pop up an invoice for you. Okay, that looks good. Let me hop up an invoice right here. So if by default, we'll have, and see here's the, that order number. This is also the escrow number. So by default, that will always be on the page. Okay, so the order number is the same as the escrow number because you can input that. <clears throat> Correct, so you can always add this. This box here is where the line item features are, and you can always add more. Let's say you had to do a re-signing. You, you went out and you did it on, we'll say July 1st, and then you need to add another line because you had to do a, you had to re-sign or reprint. You have to, how many times do we have to reprint that? Mm -hmm. Reprint, and you're going to get twenty-five dollars for that. Oops, not two hundred fifty. That'd be awesome. But I wish. <laughs> and you can add that as yesterday too, and it'll automatically tally, and you can see it. So you can add as many line items as you need to, and modify this as it goes down, and it'll calculate down here. Now this is still just a working. This is just your edit box. It's not what your final customer sees. You can see what the final customer sees by going to the print preview. Did you get to see that? Did it pop? No, it didn't pop up. It, okay. uh, There's a, so can you see the, the print preview button? Yes. You can see that? Okay. Probably because it's hopping up in another window, we launch another window. But you can see it before you send it. So you can print preview everything so that you can kind of get an idea of how your invoice looks before you send it out. So this is where you might play with it a little bit and then you might go back into settings, go to layout and you might choose a different layout because you like the way it looks a little different. So there's a little back and forth to kind of tweak what you want to see but then once it's set up all of the invoices will look like that moving forward. Question uh, on this Sue, we have one question on this. Of course. Um, is there any automation integrations available? Automation integrations available. I don't know what it means, but uh, Ross is asking the question, so I was hoping that that meant something to you. Uh, um, we automatically will dump as much information 
as we can into the, this is the cover page to the, the invoice, but then the, the meat and potatoes will be pulled from the signing appointment. So let me close this. I think this might answer his question. Um, so here's the signing editing page. And Brandon, we're gonna touch about that tomorrow or Wednesday. <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar. <laughs> like, where are we on that? But you can edit this. So this is a quick preview of the signing page. And you can actually, this is the signings information. So this is who you've been hired by, how much it's for, your order number, who you're meeting, where you're meeting, their phone numbers. If you, The more information you put in, obviously, in your signing information, the more notary assist can do for you moving out. The invoice about how this hat was happening. Did you drop off the documents? Did we track them? And then any notes about the document or the signing itself that you might need to keep for your personal business. But we try to grab as much information from this page to put into the invoice on the back end. So we try to grab what we can and we're automatically pulling the information from your customer under the customer section from here. So we're pulling from the signing information and the customer information to make the invoice. I hope that answered the question. Um, I think he's uh, talking more about um, outside systems integrating with notary assist like Zapier. Oh, not yet. People were trying to work with some other companies and stuff like that to see what the cost involved would be. A lot of times that open uh, uh, API can cost something. So we're just trying to put our feelers out and see what other automated things we can help you with because it would be lovely to know even if they would just push it to us and if we could funnel it into your bookkeeping to make it easier. We would love to be able to bring that to you. Again, it's part of the negotiation process because every software is proprietary. So, and we understand and we respect, but if we can at least get a push of data in, then we hope we would be able to help. Fantastic. Can I ask you a couple more questions on this? Of course. So, um, Kurt asks, is the customer equal to hired by on your form? So that's not the borrower? Correct. Customer, well, it can be, it can be both. So the customer is whoever you're receiving payment from. So if you're receiving payment from general notary work, it might be your neighbor, Bruce. Bruce might be paying you, but he also is the signer. So you would have him set up as a customer. Uh, where are we? Customers right here and you'd also have them as a signer. So you would put them in both places. And you might do stuff for Bruce on a regular basis, so you wanna be able to pull Bruce in more often. Other times it would just be a one-to-one, -one. you might do a one-off, you go see Bruce one time and then you don't see Bruce anymore. But your customer is going to be who writes you a check. The signer is who's actually physically signing any of your documents. Love that. And then John asks for a little more clarification on the mileage. Um, if you're going to two, two separate signings back to back, um, if you're going to the next appointment, how does that work? Okay. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. So mileage has its own little entity. We do round trip auto calculation from where you're starting from under my account to your signing appointment in your database and back. Now, if you're gonna go from Dana Point to another appointment to another appointment, it's gonna, Notary Assist by default is gonna give you round trip A, round trip B, round trip C. So you might need to go in, and if you look across, I'm on the view signings page right now, so if you're trying to figure out where I am, I'm on the view signings page. For example, if I come over here to mileage, for the same appointment, it defaulted to 28 miles. I might have only gone 15, and then I went to the next one. This is a round trip total as well. So maybe I did 15 here, seven, you know, eight here, and then this one's totally wrong, because why is that so high? Anyway. That's a long trip. <laughs> Another state. <laughs> well, I was going to Great, Great Falls, Idaho. Isn't that awesome? Oh, I know, we did a demonstration there. That's why. <laughs> but, um, you can, you can then come in and then modify this at any time and put 15 and you can overwrite it. So you can, you can modify this at any time, either on here 
or you can come back in here and when you go to tracking is where your mileage is going to be you can modify this to 15 and hit save and it'll open it for you awesome. so that you might have to do a little bit of modification if you're doing appointment to appointment to appointment but we still can calculate it for you and then also here's this little extra mileage little icon this is for all those little trips that you might do like to drop off documents like maybe you're not necessarily dropping off documents at ups for one particular appointment you're dropping off five and you don't want to necessarily tack on the mileage to this one appointment you want to keep it separate so here extra mileage allows you to add extra mileage tell them where you're going what date you went what your total mileage was and save it and then notary assist will take any extra mileage and drop it in to the mileage report at the end of the year so it knows that you did business mileage but not necessarily affiliated with a particular appointment that, that's really well thought out I think that's one thing it doesn't even cross my mind is how many trips you make that are business related but not necessarily a signing appointment right right fantastic so I'm going to jump down now, if, it, if unless there's more questions, I'm going to hop down to loan types, which I kind of touched base with you guys about that it's going to change to signing type or appointment type. We pre-populated these with refinance, purchase, sale, and HELOC. Well, I've had people call and go, well, hey, I'm a general notary person. I'm like, no problem. We're just going to add a new type. So you can add an acknowledgement, apostille, fingerprinting, general notary work, sure, reverse mortgage, what work you I even have a lady whose husband does handyman work and so oops, you hit save sorry let me pull it back up handyman work you can you can build this out to whatever revenue stream you guys need and it'll break it down by appointment and then by customer when we run the reports and I'll kind of go over that later in the week when we get to reporting but you can break this down. You can add as many types of revenue stream that you have right here. There you go, guys. I know this is a question that just came up a few times in the chat window, but this is exactly how you would add any other services. That's really what this is, is service types, not necessarily look types um, for anything that you're doing. Um, the, the question in the chat window was if you had a living trust or a last will and testament, if you wanted that line item that, you could certainly do it right here. Bing, bing, bing. You just add it right here. And we'll break it down for you. And a lot of times you know which customers are hiring you for that kind of work. So you have an idea and you can break down uh, as I get to it in the end of the, at the end of the week, we break it down in reporting. So you can see your revenue streams and you can kind of compare what are my best revenue streams. Maybe should I go more in this direction because I'm doing better here or should I modify mid year and go this way because something changed in the economy. Love that. And this, yeah, that's great. Very cool. And then I'm going to close out of this. And then tracking, we've pre-filled this. This is, again, for a lot of people that have to send their documents back and they want to know, you know, sometimes you get Jane signed for it at the front desk, but then they're asking you where the heck your, their docs are. Well, you can actually track it. You can. This goes to a live tracking URL. It'll redirect you to these URLs. And then let's say you're in a different part of the country and you have a different tracking service, just add a new company and give us your website information and we'll add it. And this will come into the default drop down boxes. You can, as we go through the, the software, there's lots of drop down boxes that you can select how you sent stuff back. And this would be added to your drop down box. Very flexible. I love that. And then the big one from yesterday is the iCal and the Google Calendar. This is probably one of our coolest features and it makes notaries' lives so much easier. So every appointment that you add into Notary Assist, if you've got an appointment, uh, Jane doesn't have any appointments, let's go last month, but it doesn't matter. Um, you can see them on your Google Calendar and your iCal. We'll push that information for you if you wish. So if we click on Google Calendar and we wanna allow the access, so you're going to click on access. So it's basically saying, hey, if you want to add an appointment, would you like us to push it to your Google Calendar? And we're going to say, well, yeah, I'd love that. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see how it bounced to Google? Or did I leave you? 
and you see that it, oh, you got, okay, good. I'm like, can you see this? So yeah. basically you would then just sign in with your account. You pick the, the push it to, and then it'll take you back. There. So, and then we, and you just type in your password and it'll say, congratulations, you have now pushed your Google Calendar. And it'll say, yes, it'll have a little, it'll turn off the allow access and they'll have a check mark. Jane doesn't have an actual real email address, otherwise I'd show you how to do it. Um, and it's the same thing in iCal. Now iCal, again, you would just, right now it's not pushing, you would turn this on, you'll be redirected to Apple's site where you would put in your iCloud email address and password and allow us to push to that calendar. Then that's a two-step process. By just turning it on in our system, that's halfway there. You also then need to go to your mobile device, whether it's a Android or an Apple. Look at oh me go. Gosh, both of those? Oh, heck, man. I got I to gotta know how to do tech support on both. <laughs> oh, that's true. I guess so. Huh? I love that. Commitment. So we then have to turn the Google push on here or the, well, it wouldn't go to iCal here. This would be Google. And this would be your iCal, or you can do Google on the smartphones. We, we've gotten pretty savvy about how to walk you through it, but there is a step-by-step -step process that you have to actually have the email account received at your cell phone level and turn the calendar off. If you do that, then all of Notary Assist appointments will go to, let me, let me see if I can get this open, to the default calendar, that little you know, little Apple calendar that has the little date in it. And same with the Android. It'll push it straight to the native calendars on your smartphone. Now, if you have a calendar that you've downloaded and you, you love that calendar, there's a different process to kind of push to that. And we wouldn't necessarily know that process, but we'll try to help you work through it. I love that. And I think that's a great opportunity to talk about the customer support that you offer. I know we talked a little bit about it yesterday, but not everybody was on the call yesterday. Can you just recap what they can do if they need to get a hold of you? So we are open Monday through Friday, Pacific Standard Time from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And sometimes a little bit later because we're good. We're not going to just shut the phones off. So, and we actually answer our phone. We are people, we answer the phone. Um, you're going to get a human being. You're not going to get a you know, put press two, press this. We're not going to do that to you. At least we're trying really, really hard to have that personal connection because we like personal connection. And then anytime after hours, you can always reach us at support at notaryassist.com. And our phone number is area code 949-713-3570. And we'll be more than happy to help you walk through stuff. And a lot of times, People will call in and they're having an issue. It's, it's a Google issue. It's not necessarily our issue or it's a, it's a calendaring issue that wasn't ours. But our, techs, our tech people are so savvy and they're so friendly. They might even be able to walk you through something that they can fix instead of saying, oh, go try to call Google. You're not going to get somebody at Google. It's, it's pretty hard to get a hold of a tech support person there. So we're going to try and help you so that you can get back on the road doing what you're doing and making money. We want to try and help you best we can. I love that. Sue, once again, thank you so much. And again, I also want to say that thank you for the amazing discount that you've offered everybody who's listening here. First of all, guys, Notary Assist is free for 30 days or up to 20 appointments, right, Sue? Correct. Correct. Yep. No credit card needed. We don't, we don't want you to pay for anything to try it out. We want you to try it out. Call in, ask questions. We'll walk you through something. If you're stuck on something, that way you know that you're investing in a good product and you can you can feel confident that you're purchasing what you want excellent uh, would you mind slowly repeating the phone number for us so i can type that in here not a problem 949-713-3570 and i've included also a link to sign up for the free trial and then after that sue is giving you all a 25 percent discount when you buy the annual plan and that, I mean, the annual plan, what was, it's less than a hundred bucks anyway, and you're offering 25% off of that, right? Yeah, so it's $84.99 regularly, so I think it drops it down to like $63 or $64. 64 bucks for an entire year on your accounting software. That's pretty awesome, guys. Once and again, it's Sue. it's a off it's an expense, so you get that back. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> 
it's, Sue, a, I think business, that, it's a business purchase. <laughs> exactly. So that wraps up our, our day two. Tomorrow, day three, we're talking about how to actually begin using it, right? Yeah, we're going to start jumping in with customers. So if people have downloaded the free trial, or there's no download, sorry. If you've accessed or opened your free trial, grab a couple of customers. We'll walk through it. And you can kind of walk through it too while I'm online tomorrow. And you can kind of see where everything is and kind of get a feel for it as I'm walking you through it. So have a have a customer or two handy and maybe have a signing. We get to no, we get to expenses. So we'll go to customers and expenses tomorrow. And then we'll get into actually having a signing on Monday, Tuesday, what, Thursday. <laughs> I know. Thursday, July 4th. We are working on the holiday, guys, for you. We will be here 11 a.m. every single day this week with this training. And the replays, the replays are available on youtube.com forward slash notary coach. Guys, thank you so much for growing yourself and your business on the Tuesday. Sue, thank you so much for committing. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later.